Ryan, congratulations. What's your overwhelming feeling right now? A bit of fortune? Yeah, a bit of relief, really. Um, I, I got lucky in the end in the la last set. I thought he started off the, the set really well. It felt like one of those games where it was difficult to hold throw. I mean, he, he played well on my throw and I played well on his throw. It seemed like it was going like that. So actually winning the ball and throwing first felt like a disadvantage. But um, I was lucky to get through in the end, yeah. You had a great run at the William Hill World Championship a couple of years ago. It was first round exit last year. Yeah. Was that preying on your mind in closing oh, stages? Definitely, well? yeah. I mean, the amount of pressure. I, do, I don't feel any pressure normally when I'm playing in any event, but today I really felt it towards the end of that match. Because I, um, I think um, I went 2 0 down in the last set, but then I won a leg to make it 2 1, and then the pressure kicked in. Yeah, I felt like. Wow, I've got a big chance here to actually pinch this. And then I. <laughs> me, me brain went to mush after that. <laughs> well, you say your brain went to mush and the pressure got to you. Yeah. 106 to win the match there, and you managed to bust your score. Yeah. You, you think that's game over, though, don't you? Yeah, definitely. I felt. Uh, what's the word? I felt like a lemon. <laughs> I felt like I wanted to hold to open up on the stairs and just get out of there because I, I was really embarrassed with that. It's the first time I've ever done anything like that. Credit to you though, because being able to come back and win the match, you thought it was game over, but you managed to hold it together and hit the winning double in the end. Uh, yeah, I feel like uh, my performances on stage have improved the last few weeks, uh, the last few tournaments, sorry. Um, I think that's just with experience, you know, you get used to playing on the stage and you start playing a little bit like you can. And um, even though uh, to people watching it might have looked like it was a struggle, that's that's my highest average ever in a world championship today. It, it's certainly not your highest level though. I mean, we saw you at no. the World Grand Prix beat Peter Wright. You come here to this year's William Hill World Championship as a PDC title winner yeah. for the first time. You've got a lot more in your locker. Has, has winning that title changed your mindset at all? Well, uh, well yeah, definitely, yeah, a little bit. Um, rather than change mindset, my, my mindset, I'm hoping that changes the other players' mindset as to say that they're more worried about me because before that, they might have thought, oh, it's nobody, you know, he's not going to, he can't beat me if I play my best. But now, when you win things in the PDC, people look at you and say, you, you, he will beat me if he plays his best. And it, it's a bit of a role reversal, yeah. Well, I, don't, I, I think you might, you, maybe you're not even aware of it. A couple of years ago, when you got to the quarterfinals, I remember you losing to Michael Van Gogh and you came off stage and were like, Oh, it's Michael Van Gogh. I was never going to win that. It's Michael Van Gogh. I really did believe that at the time, yeah. But then I was you, also, way behind. you also really believed just a couple of months ago, I'm playing well enough to win the World Grand Prix, and you were gutted yeah. that you went out. Yeah. So definitely. something has changed, hasn't it? Yeah, um, that was a double star competition. Uh, uh, <laughs> different. <laughs> but um, uh, you've just got to try your best every game, haven't you? If you're good enough, you'll win it, definitely. But if you're not good enough, you'll get beat. That's the way I look at it. You have the capability to be good enough, though, don't you? Probably. Well, I think um, if you look at, if you think, if you discuss probability and statistics, no. But um, there is a, uh, there is an outside chance that I could win it. Yeah. Good man. Good man. I think it's a, I've got a better chance than a lot of other players. <laughs> good luck. Well played today. Mate. Cheers. Ryan, 2-0 uh, down in that deciding set, what was going through your mind knowing that obviously there's no tie break to fall back on this year? Yeah, um, I, um, when I was 2-0 down it was still my throw in the third leg and I thought, um, I, I still felt confident that I could win the match. The only time I felt like I had blown it was when I busted 106 at 2 -0. Yeah, I still felt like I could win the match at 2-0 down. You feel like a test like that will stand you in good stead going forward. You've got Christopher Tyski up next. Uh, I've got. I've played in the PDC that long to know that every game's different. It's all on the day. I know I can beat Christopher Tyski. It's probably I could play him ten times. I might beat him three or four out of ten. And uh, why can't that three or four out of ten be be on the twenty first of uh, December? I'm going to go into the game thinking that I can win definitely. You know, the first of the North East players through today. Do you think we could see a, a clean sweep? I'd love to see it, yeah, definitely. I, I, I'll be staying all day to support the other North East lads. Um, Chris Doby, Adam Hunt, Colin Rids and Glenn Durham. Definitely, I'll be way, right behind them and hope they'll do well. Thanks, Ryan. Congratulations, Ryan.
Yeah. Um, when we spoke earlier in the year, um, your confidence was shattered at one stage, you said, and yeah. you've had such a terrific year since then. And What's changed with your mindset? Every player, I think, goes through um, ups and downs in form, but uh, the, uh, you go away and practice and you try and work out what's going wrong, and that's what I've done. And um, when you find a uh, it's a little bit like snooker, you know, you, you, I heard Ronnie O'Sullivan the other day talking about he feels like he hasn't got a good cue action, but so when, he, when he is feeling good, he plays tremendous. And I think all darts players are like Ronnie O'Sullivan, when they feel like they're playing well, they'll play well, and um, it all comes from practice and having confidence and having experience. Um, it's, it's so much in the mind, the game of darts, it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. All these professional players, you see the averages go up and down, and you think, well, how can I play at average 110 one day and then 79 the next day? And it's, it's, it really is all in the head, I think. Um, everybody's capable. Yeah, and talking about your belief this year, yeah. uh, beating Peter uh, and winning your, the title, as we've spoken about, that's obviously given you a, a newfound, new Ryan joy. It does, eh? it, it really does give you a lot of confidence. Um, I, I think when I'm playing on stage, the last, the last few times, I've worked out through experience, through playing regularly on the stage this year, I've played in a, a, all the major tournaments virtually and for the first time. And have to keep telling myself in my head to, not to grip the darts too tightly, not let the tension take over because that's what's happened in the past. I've been too tense, been too nervous and it's been a new experience for us and I've struggled. But I feel like I can relax now, even when I'm losing in losing situations. Just relax and just, just throw the darts. If you're good enough, you'll still win the game. It seems to be working. Thanks, Mike.